the African Union and the United States urged Ethiopia and Somalia to de-escalate tensions in a region on the eve of a global maritime choke point. Welcome everyone in today's video. We're going to tell you four African nations block Israel's access to Red Sea. This week, Ethiopia, the world's most populated landlocked nation, signed a treaty with Somaliland, a breakaway region of Somalia, to get access to the Red Sea. Somalia rejected the agreement, calling it a crime against Somalia's sovereignty and territorial integrity. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. The Somaliland Council of Ministers issued a stern warning in a statement that it will take appropriate action against those who attempted to disrupt or obstruct the Memorandum of Understanding. The African Union and the United States have joined the European Union in intervening in the dispute over the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which connects the Red Sea with the Suez Canal and accounts for 12 of global trade. While the U.S. aged both parties to respect each other's territorial integrity, the U reminded Ethiopia of Somalia's sovereignty and the U.S. urged them to engage in dialogue. According to a statement on the UA Commission's website, Wednesday, Chief Musa Faki Maham urged the two countries to desist from any action that unintentionally may contribute to a deterioration of the cordial relations between the two adjacent Eastern African countries. We join other partners in voicing our deep concern about the resultant escalation in tensions in the Horn of Africa, told a State Department spokesman Matthew Miller. The United States recognizes the Federal Republic of Somalia's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its 1960 boundaries. The agreement, announced in Addis Abeba on Monday, will offer Ethiopia a 50-year lease to develop a naval station and commercial maritime services on the strategically important Gulf of Aden. Only days after Somalia agreed to resume talks with Somaliland after years of stagnation, Somaliland will receive a stake in Ethiopian Airlines in exchange. In a statement issued Wednesday, Somaliland's Council of Ministers stated that Ethiopia will also acknowledge its sovereignty. Ethiopia has stated that the government will conduct an in-depth assessment before granting recognition to the breakaway area. Carriers have already shifted more than $200 billion in trade from the Red Sea to escape attacks by Iran-backed Houthi insurgents headquartered in Yemen. Violence along a crucial Middle Eastern commerce corridor has already resulted in lengthier shipping times and higher freight costs. According to industry experts, around 20 of vessel capacity is not being used due to a large decline in manufacturing orders. Attacks on ships in the Red Sea continue to raise maritime freight charges, prompting inflation and delivery delays. Carriers have already shifted more than $200 billion in cargo away from the critical Middle East trade route, which, along with the Suez Canal, connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean in order to avoid strikes by Iran-backed Houthi insurgents headquartered in Yemen. According to logistics managers, this has created a multi-front storm for global trade. Freight rates are rising on a daily basis, with additional surcharges, longer shipping durations, and the risk that spring and summer items will be delayed owing to vessels arriving late in China after traveling the long route around South Africa's Cape of Good Hope. If the troubles in the Red Sea and Indian Ocean continue, the supply chain pressures that drove the A-transitory's component of inflation in 2022 may be about to reappear," said Larry Lindsay, CEO of global economic advice firm The Lindsay Group. The Federal Reserve of the United States and other central banks have been raising interest rates to combat excessive inflation. However, the Fed is expected to begin lowering rates soon. Neither the Fed nor the SEB can do anything about them and will most likely see through the inflation they produce, potentially leading to rate reduction despite somewhat elevated inflation pressures," Lindsay added. On Wednesday, the United States, Japan, the United Kingdom, and nine other countries issued a strong warning in response to the ongoing violence against commercial ships. The Houthi Uthis will suffer the consequences if they continue to endanger lives the global economy, and free trade in the region's crucial waterways, the governments warned in a joint statement. 
Meanwhile, according to industry analysts, around 20T of vessel capacity is not being used due to a large decline in manufacturing orders. Instead, ocean carriers are continuing to reduce their sailings, while restricted capacity and longer trip times fuel rate increases. This week, freight rates from Asia to Northern Europe more than doubled to more than $4,000 per 40-foot equivalent unit. Prices for Asia Mediterranean containers have risen to $5,175 per container. Some carriers have declared tariffs exceeding $6,000 per 40-foot container for Mediterranean shipments beginning in the middle of the month, with surcharges ranging from $500 to $2,700 per container. Given the abrupt increase in ocean freight rates, we should expect to see these increased costs trickle down the supply chain and affect customers. As we progress through the first quarter, said Alan Bayer, CEO of All USA, companies will raise pricing sooner rather than later, reflecting lessons acquired during the supply chain. Instability of 2021-22, he noted rates from Asia to the east coast of North America have soared by $55 to $3,900 per 40-foot container. Prices on the west coast increased by 63% to more over $2,700. More shippers are likely to shun the east coast in favor of west coast ports. Similarly, rates are set to climb again on January 15 due to already announced hikes. This is significant because it has primarily been the decline in goods prices that has eased the inflation strain, said Peter Bukvar, investment chief at Bleakley Financial Group, to CNBC. And while the fights in the Red Sea could finish at any time if the war in Gaza ends, it serves as a reminder to the Fed that they cannot become complacent in their fight against inflation. If they do not want to repeat the 1970s, Capacity is being harmed by diversions from Egypt's Suez Canal, which feeds into the Red Sea. According to Honor Lane Shipping, rerouting vessels around the Cape of Good Hope adds two to four weeks to a round-trip cruise. To maintain an efficient network schedule, ocean alliances require more ships on each Asia East Coast route. Approximately 2530 of worldwide container shipping volumes travel through the Suez Canal and significant rerouting across Africa is expected to limit effective global container shipping capacity by 1015, according to the paper. As the interruption continues, airlines may be forced to cut the number of ports calls in order to offset the burden of longer journeys. The extended travel time may also cause a delay in the arrival of spring items, which are generally purchased before the Chinese Lunar New Year, which is slated for February, when factories close and employees go on vacation. According to logistics management, containers that were due to arrive on the East Coast in December are now coming. Spring and summer apparel, pools, pool supplies, Easter items, patio furniture, and home and garden products are all available. According to data from Maritime Intelligence Services, North American East Coast ports missed multiple calls in December due to Houthi attacks, which were instead moved into January. Instead, the ships will arrive in January and Feb. As a result, vessels are not only late in dropping off containers at their final destinations, but they are also late in returning to Asia to load containers. As a result, HLS advises customers to reserve their container space four to five weeks in advance to ensure a spot. It's similar to what freight businesses faced during COVID's early days. We used to book out four to six weeks in advance during COVID, Old Bear USA's explained. We had entirely too much cargo during COVID and all the ships were filled, so you had to plan ahead of time. While there is vessel capacity, the vessels are running late, so it's a race to get your container on that vessel. That's all for today's video. Ocean carriers are also developing land freight services for people who choose to use West Coast ports rather than East Coast ports. And during COVID, Hapig Lloyd used a similar technique, offering client service across land to the West Coast from the East Coast because it was speedier. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.